Thank you, Jesus. What a glorious day. What a beautiful day. What a wonderful day. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. Father, we thank you tonight for your presence. We thank you tonight for your word. I pray for the revelation of your word to come forth in power and in the anointing of God. I pray that you will show yourself mighty and strong on our behalf. Thank you for what you're busy doing. Thank you that you will deliver people, set them free in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of the Lord. Good evening, beloveds. Good evening, friends. Welcome. Thank you for tuning in to our broadcast. We are so grateful, so thankful that God called us at a time such as this to raise us up as a voice, not as an echo, but a voice in the kingdom of God. Tonight I would like to speak on the subject of the kingly anointing and how the, the kingly anointing is related to the apostolic anointing, the apostolic mantle, the apostolic mandate, that rest upon the church. We get up apostolic churches and then we get churches that move in the spirit of an apostle. But then we get people who are called to be apostles in the house of God. So, but before we go into that, we will talk about uh, the kingly anointing. Um, one of the reasons I want to talk about it because when I was still living in Johannesburg more than 20 years ago, uh, I heard some intercessors and some people came and tell me that this man has been anointed as a king, so he's now a businessman. And I didn't say anything because, well, don't open your mouth if you don't know anything. So I started to research the word of God. What is the Bible saying in the Old Testament of the ministry of a king? We know in uh, Revelation chapter 1 verse 6 he called us all to be kings and priests in his kingdom so I'm so grateful that every believer has called he has called them to stand as a priest firstly then as a king without the priestly operation in our lives we will never be able to function as a king in the kingdom of God I want to go into that shortly, but I just want to share something with you. I saw on Facebook, some of you might have seen it. That's why I want to make it publicly known that in Nigeria, since in 2020 already, 620 Christians have been slaughtered and murdered by a radical Islam. Boko Haram and the other Fulani herdsmen. I pray today that God will intervene by fire, that he will show who is God in their lives. And uh, the other thing is, once again, I need to tell you that our government is on the wrong path. Their alignment with China is absolute wickedness. It is time for the church to pray like never before. Because in China, many Christians are martyred. Many churches are closed. In one instance, I heard that the cross has been removed and pictures have been removed of Jesus. Not that I believe in those pictures. Then the president of China's face were put in there. Now, these atrocities, this government doesn't open their mouth. And I pray today that God will bring in righteous leaders that will stand for the truth of the word of God. We also know that um, in South Africa, the government gave permission for the Zangomas. People can go for counseling there and get their herbal stuff and they can operate in the witchcraft. So this is totally demonic, which basically means that the church has been degraded from 
a place of power to a place where they have no say in this nation. And I said last week, and I want to say it again today, the root of a tree gives life to a tree. And the church is the life of this nation. The foundation of this nation is the word of God. And if the foundation is removed and this uh, nation does not acknowledge the Lord God as their God, then the foundation of this nation is totally removed and this building will come down. So we need to stand in the gap, believe God, that through his mighty power, a new foundation must be raised up. I will trust God that I will speak later on or uh, I don't know how the Lord along. I trust God that next week is Pentecost Sunday. It will come an announcement that we can go to the house of God. It's not a prophecy. We believe God for it. And uh, may the power of the anointing of God rest upon the church of the living God. Amen. Beloveds, tonight I'm going to speak on the, sorry for this uh, interruption, but I have to, we do some recordings as well for the church, those who are not able to go onto Facebook because of, uh, because of uh, uh, data problems, we trust God that his word will come forth in power. So welcome family from all over so glad that you are watching. Uh, I want you to go with me to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 8, from verse 4. And the Bible says, Where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, What doest thou? Where the word of a king is, there is power. Can I repeat it? Where the word of a king is, there is power. Now in the NIV, that's the old King James, the Bible said the word of a king is supreme. Who can say unto the king, what are you doing? Where the word of a king is, there is power. Now we were talking for the last time in the week about the kingly anointing. And, uh, and not the kingly, about the anointing, the three levels of the anointing, the anointing of deliverance. But tonight we're going to talk about the kingly anointing. One of the main reasons I believe that people believe that the, uh, the kingly anointing is for those who have, know how to make business. And I believe they take it from the book of, uh, or from the man Solomon, who the Bible said he was very rich and he was the richest man upon the face of the earth. Now I want to tell you the reason he could step into that dimension except that he was, he asked God for wisdom and he moved in the wisdom of God and he moved in God's wisdom and he knew how to run business affairs. One of the main reasons that he could step into that because his father David conquered all Israel's enemy. The Bible tells me that David was a man of war. So when Solomon took over, there was no war to fight. So he could, could build businesses. Let me tell you today, unless there's a warfare, let me say a kingly anointing is a warfare anointing. But currently our, our economy has been destroyed it was already down but it destroyed i mean if you see how the enemy has uh, removed people's ability to make money put them in a place of oppression and depression right now in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth i come up against the work of the devil in the name of Jesus. I rebuke Satan. I rebuke Satan. I mean businesses are destroyed. 620 people has been murdered and slaughtered by Islamists 
in northern Nigeria. Not so many people. I mean, how many? They didn't put on Facebook again. How many people has been murdered through abortion? Babies been aborted. It was already at the beginning of, or the end of April, or beginning of April, over 10, 11 million. But there is no outcry. There is no outcry. Let me say, it is absolute wickedness and evil things that's going on in this world. The new world order is actually promoted by our government. But the kingly anointing has been spoken of in many circles. Now, the ministry of an apostle in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 28, the Bible said that the apostles go first. And if you see that the apostle Paul was a man that were in constant warfare against the power of darkness. Doesn't the Bible tells me in the book of Ephesians chapter uh, 6 verse 12, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and uh, uh, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in dark places. We are ruling, we are warring against these powers of darkness. And that you cannot do it with an, a, a, a priestly anointing. Priestly anointing is for intercession. But a kingly anointing is to stand and to rule in the midst of your enemy. When you give a command and you tell Satan, back off and get out of my life. So uh, David was anointed as a king and the first time he was anointed he was a king with no throne, he no a, a, a place to rule and to govern only over the house of Judah. But Judah was with the house of Benjamin, two tribes, but the house of Israel consists of ten tribes. So when he started to rule over Israel, it took him 20 years. The governmental anointing grow with a person as you grow in the grace of God. Today you find out to they prophesy one prophecy over somebody that is an apostle. Tomorrow you walk around, I'm apostle, diddle do. But there is no growth in his ministry. It is not preaching that makes you an apostle. No, it's the anointing and the call of God that will make you an apostle. Some people have an apostolic dimension in you, but you are not an apostle. You have to wait until God called and separate you and set you apart. This is not to play because Jesus said that uh, they kill and destroy the apostles and the prophets. We will go into later. As a, after David was anointed as king, the Bible tells me they, 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 the, the, they came against David and his family, but David were on war path. And when they got back to their home at Ziklag, they found out that everybody, all their children, Everything their own was taken by a foreign en enemy. So David went out it and conquered it. Why? He was not as a king yet. He had no throne, but he was in a war. Let me tell you, beloved, if you want to grow in your kingly anointing, you must be able to war. Whatever the enemy planned against your life, that you will not, uh, uh, you will overcome by the power of the anointing. Now, it is important, beloved, that you will, must understand that we need to go into the function. What does the, was the king called to do? Whatever the king was called to do, we will go into that tonight. And uh, the kingly anointing consists of two dimensions. The one dimension is the one that we were talking about for the uh, last week. The first uh, uh, anointing, the second kingly anointing, the third kingly anointing. 
But the second dimension is where the operation of the spirit of power will come upon the true apostolic. Why? Because kingly anointing speaks of territory. What is the territory that your own influence are in? So in the second dimension of the kingly anointing, um, that dimension enabled the, the apostles to go into hostile territories where gangsterism arrived, where witchcraft domination and sorcery is the stronghold in that area to walk in divine authority. That is what kingly anoint, uh, uh, anointing is all about, to walk in divine authority. And we need to understand, beloveds, to walk in that dimension, it will cost you. It will cost your life of sacrifice. It will cost your life of prayer. It will cost your life of, of, of fasting, of separating yourself, get into the word. And we have to face in this country altars of humanism. Uh, um, we have to face in this country the altars of abortion, Hinduism, Islam, and all these altars need to come down in the mighty name of Jesus. The apostolic anointing is therefore given, beloved, or the ministry of an apostle. Or the apost when I talk about the apostolic anointing, it means as a church we can all come together and we pray apostolic prayers. As a church, we can all function together as we are one body in the uh, uh, presence of the Lord. When you get together at your local church, you might not be an apostle, but together you can pray apostolic prayers uh, and come up against the spirit of gangsterism, the spirit of, of uh a bloodshed in our nation, the demonic powers that govern our nation, the ruling spirit over our nation. If this nation come together as one in prayer, we can unseat the ruling principality that currently govern this nation. Number one is racism. Number two is ancestral uh, demonic powers that this nation, this government has instituted by our president. I know some of you don't like what I said, but it doesn't matter. I will speak the truth because every demon of hell will bow in the name of Jesus. I'm not here to no negotiate with the devil, nor to make friends with a, a political. I don't care. I'm here firstly as an ambassador of the kingdom of God. And I will do what I'm instructed to do. Because God didn't place the apostolic call upon my life. Or the apostolic dimension upon my life. Or in our church that we have to go with the status quo. What everybody's saying, we're going to say no. We will go against the stream. We know that the apostolic anointing, the kingly anointing, was an anointing for war. Hallelujah. We give you praise, Lord. We give you praise. We know in the book of Luke chapter 10, verse 19, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and upon scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing by enemy shall hurt you. There are people today, I want you, if you don't know the scripture, get it in your spirit, get it in your heart, get it in your mind, especially the nurses, get it in you. Uh, Mark chapter 16 from verse 17 and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name they will cast out devils they will speak with a new tongue uh, they will pick up serpents and if they drink of any deadly thing it will not harm them if you drink any deadly thing it will not harm you we know that David was anointed three times as a, we know that he was anointed three times as king. God wants to anoint you 
and you need to go into a secondly as a king over Judah and thirdly as king over Israel now in Revelation chapter 1 verse 6 and we quote, quoted that scripture before and he made us kings and priests to his God and Father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever when God created Adam and Eve from the dust of the earth the one thing that he gave them is rulership and dominion let me tell you through sin men lost dominion and rulership God restoring to the church of the living God so he restore new dominion and authority we as the church of the living God needs to know how big our God is, how great our God is, how powerful our God is, because he said, he said, but the people who know that God shall be strong and do great exploit. You will do great exploit in the kingdom of God. If we can't do great exploits, yes, I don't want to say to you tonight that the coronavirus is not dangerous. But I want to tell you, if you move in the power of God, if you move in the spirit of the living God, if you move under the authority of the word of God, then this coronavirus is nothing. Why? It's a small thing. The coronavirus in your body must die in the name of Jesus. It must die tonight in the mighty name of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Number one, we have to ask, what is a king? In 1 Samuel chapter 8 verse 11, and he said, this will be the behavior of the king who will reign over you. What is the behavior of a king? The behavior of a king, the king has the power to command people and say to them, listen, come and work as a slave. Come and work as a servant. Come, I want you to be in the army. And you can't say no. Why? Because the word of a king is supreme. And the word of a king has power. Power to rule. There's a scepter of authority in the word of a king. So a king can make people their servants. A king claim taxes. How many of us have to pay all kinds of taxes? And now you claim taxes from the devil. Whatever the enemy has stolen from you, your health, your joy, your peace. The word of a king has power when you decree in the atmosphere. When you say, devil, take your hands off my body. Take it off my life. I don't want you in my life. We, according to the Bible, and when you study the life of a king, a king had authority at the gate. What is gate? A gate is a place of sacrifice. A gate is a shabby. A gate is a house, a drug house. A gate is a nightclub. A Gate is all, uh, um, what is that word? Porn houses. That's a gate, a place of authority, an access for the devil. Abortion clinics are gates. This thing about humanism, it's a gate, an entry, a gate, a king, an authority at the gate. A gate speaks of entrances that you allow in your life, family, city, and country. A king rule at the gate. A king sat at the gate and said, no more drug houses. No more porn houses. A king sat at the gate and said, no more shabins. No more house of gangsterism. 
A king had the right to claim tribute from his people. He had the right. Why? Because he's king. You can tell the devil when you're a king. Rule in the midst of your enemy. Pay back now. Whatever you have stolen, I want my money back now. Hallelujah. A king, he used his sons to serve with his chariots and placed them as commanders of the army. He used their daughters to be perfumers and to be cooks and bakers. That is what a king does. You can't refuse a king. You say, yes, sir. No, sir. Immediately, my lord. And you bow your head. Rule. Rulership as a king is important. Function as a king. Live as a king. Work as a king. Govern as a king. That is kingly mandate. Kingly power. Rulership. The devil think he is the authority in the land. I remember, beloved, I went to a pastor's meeting. Some other evangelists from another nation came and had an outreach in the Western Cape. And two weeks before this meeting, I was invited. Two weeks before the meeting, the pastors were gathering already for two months or a month, I don't know how long. So they invited me as an afterthought just to have more people. So I went to this meeting and we, we went to this one pastor's uh, a church. And now I was sitting there and uh, then they said, uh, beloved, they choose a day or a day when they we can have all prayer meetings together. Now it's the first night. So I said, no, can't we make an another night? And uh, because we have our prayer meetings on a Wednesday night, one pastor stood up and he said, in the name of Jesus, I command you to close your meeting. I said, who do you think you are? Who do you think you are speaking to? Who do you think you are addressing right now? You cannot talk to me if you don't know how to talk to me. I will not obey you. And don't use the name of Jesus to manipulate me. Now that was the manipulation of the name of Jesus to be so that you could be a subject. Because we all love the name of Jesus. Then he wanted to tell me, Oh, but you know about gangsterism and all. I said, since when is the gangsters in control? Since when are they in charge of our cities? We have to obey you now because of the gangsters? No, they're not in charge. They're not in control. We are in charge. We have dominion. God anointed us to be kings in his kingdom and let the work of the devil be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I remember last year sometime one of our people or somebody at that time their family member cousin was shot and killed in Elsie's River area and I was, I heard about it. We had a practice that night. And I decided I wasn't supposed to go. And I, because we were busy that night, and I decided to take somebody that wanted to go. And I took that person there, and I decided to stay for the evening. And uh, the preacher ministered the word of God. And after he ministered the word of God, he spoke about salvation, but they never spoke about bloodshed. Why? Because it was an open air meeting and the area was controlled as well by gangsters. So they talk about salvation. I said, this is wrong. 
This cannot be. It is impossible that somebody, when blood is shed, you're going to speak about salvation. So I ask the host of the meeting, can I pray? And I never request anybody for a prayer. I rather go home and do nothing but something rise up on the inside of me. A military anointing. A warfare anointing. What I didn't know, there were four of those guys that were watching us and pro tried to protect us. I released a prayer. I said every blood sucking demon, every spirit of blood say, shed that is in this land and anyone that is involved with bloodshed, I release the power of the blood of Jesus against you. Turn or burn from your wickedness. Well, that was more or less that I prayed. The pastor was upset. How can Lionel pray this prayer? Don't you know it's all about souls? No, you have to take your authority. What happened afterwards, I heard. Then the four gangsters that watch us. The gun in the hand begin to burn like fire. Three of them drop it. The one ran to their house. And drop it in their bedroom. Why? Because of divine authority. That is kingly anointing, beloved. When you know your anointing. You will not be silent in what the devil is doing. No, you will not be silent. You will take your place of authority. You will stand up and say, no, you will not accept it. It is not acceptable. That's why I believe that the apostolic anointing, beloved, is the anointing of authority and power. Signs, wonders, and miracles. Is part of the apostolic mandate. We are there sent to conquer territories. I don't care if his name is Lastach or Kastach or Machtach. I don't care if the world fear them. We need to take our place of authority in the kingdom of God. I release the anointing of power. I release the second dimension of the apostles upon the house of God. They will not move in fear. They will move in faith. In 1 Samuel chapter 8, from verse 19, 9 to 17, and verse 20, he said, Then we will be like other nations, with a king to lead us in to go before us and to fight our battles. That is what apostolic churches do. They fight battles. There are people that don't believe in warfare. But if you don't know how to pray, you will never be able to carry the anointing of warfare upon your life. What is? A king is a general in the army. And he fought with divine strategies from heaven. Israel wanted the king to lead them. And to fight their battles. There are people today in the world. Together as one church. You can up, move and operate apostolically. Pray apostolic prayers. It will have the same impact. Your pastor might not be an apostle. But he can move in an apostolic dimension. You as a person. Are called to be a king. So when you come together in unity, you can operate with an apostolic mandate, take over territories. I'm so blessed by all the, the people that are marching on Sunday morning and go upon the, on the streets. They're taking territories. Together, they are releasing a mandate, an apostolic mandate to God be the glory. I said to God be the glory. 
I pray today that more churches will rise up and do apostolic prayers. I want to repeat my verse. And we will use this verse every night. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 from verse 4. Where the word of a king is there is power. And who can say to him. What are you doing? What are you doing? I love it. When the late Archbishop Benson Idawuza. What a mighty man of God made a statement on television and the government wasn't happy, happy at that time as, as of now the same. The prime minister or the president of that country was a Muslim and a general in the army saying they called him into the cabinet. And while they were seated, they asked him this question. Who give you the permission to say? It just said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The whole cabinet were down on the floor. That is apostolic power. Apostolic rulership. Apostolic anointing. In full functioning. We trust God that that anointing will be released and activated in this day in a greater measure. Let me say what the what the NIV, uh, what the new NIV says since a, since a king's word is supreme who can say to him what are you doing? Supreme. What is, does it mean supreme? It's above every, everybody else's word. Above every else's word. That's why it is important that we need to understand today why I love the kingly anointing. Why I love the anointing. It explain how people can move in authority and power. Unless you come through the three different things of three anointings, you will never be able to function fully in the apostolic mandate. But you might say, but my church is not, my pastor is not an apostle. Know that your pastor carry an apostolic anointing. He's not an apostle, but he carries, so is you. As you come and begin to pray together, the apostolic mandate will be released through the unity, through the corporate anointing over your area. God is releasing an apostolic mandate upon this church, upon the house of God. Why? Because we need to destroy demonic altars. We need to destroy the works of the devil in the name of Jesus. We cannot go into hostile territory without the kingly anointing. Thank you, beloveds. We're going to go into prayer. There's some things that we need to pray for. We believe God tonight that by the power of his word that you will receive the anointing that you will receive the power of God. You will receive the anointing of God. Amen. Just close your eyes where you are. Lift your hands. Say, Lord Jesus. Thank you for a better understanding of the kingly anointing. I'm anointed as a king. I don't know what level I am in. But Lord, I pray right now for elevation to the next level. Maybe the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Maybe the third level. 
when they say stretch forth your hand through signs, wonders, and miracles, so that the name of your son Jesus may be glorified in the whole place where they were together. They were, it was shaken by the power of God. I pray for a shaking of the power of God, of the anointing of God, upon the life of the church of the living God. Reveal your power. Reveal your anointing upon them. Show yourself mighty and strong upon their lives. Rabba sanda la bakurubona liyata na la mandia. Rabba sanda la bakurubona liyata na la mandia. Everybody just pray the Holy Ghost with me for a moment. Rabba sanda la bakurubona liyata na la mandia. The anointing of power. The anointing of miracles. Father, release your grace upon them right now. Let the grace of God, the great grace of God come upon your servant. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, I come up again the spirit of religion and tradition of men. Because according to your word, it made your power null and void. I break the spirit of religion. I curse the work of the devil in the name of Jesus. I pray right now for people that want to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Let the anointing of power be released. The anointing of miracles be released. Now in the name of Jesus. Now in the name of Jesus. Baptize them in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Baptize them right now in the name of Jesus. Let them speak with another tongue. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost fall upon them. In Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty and glorious name, touch them right now, touch them right now, touch them right now, touch them right now, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise, we give you glory. We give you praise, we give you glory. Beloved, the next prayer that we're going to do is very important. This prayer, we pray it every day. Every time when we meet, we're going to come up against the new world order. We're going to pray against the power of darkness. Every power of the enemy right now. We come up against the power of the new world order. Father, in the name of Jesus, release your mighty warrior angels right now to tie up the strong man with fetters of fire and take them down into the abyss. We ask it. We pray tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. We rebuke Satan. We release fire. We release sulfur. We release confusion. Over the new world order. The Illuminati. Right now we come up against the work of hell. The work of Satan. They destroy the livelihood of people. They put people under the pressure of the enemy. Right now, I break your power. I break your power. I curse the work of the devil in the name of Jesus. I bind the strong man in the mighty name of the Lord. Every altar that's been raised up through the new world order, racism, I rebuke that devil be destroyed by 
the hammer of God in the name of Jesus. Ancestral worship, witchcraft, domination, and sorcery. We destroy it in the mighty name of the Lord. Hospitals that's been turned into abortion clinics. I rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus. I destroy the mandate of hell by the power of hell of God in the name of Jesus. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. Rabakala Kurubondia. Come and go and cease in, in a warfare tongue. Pray in tongues. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Release your power, release your power, release your power against every spirit of bloodshed, every demon of hell. Rabba Satan, every house of gangsterism, every drug house. I destroy it now in the name of Jesus. Be destroyed. I release the fire of God upon the house of gangsterism. Against the spirit of bloodshed. I release the power of the blood of Jesus. Right now, in the name of the Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Be destroyed in the name of Jesus. We need to pray for the sick. There are some people that uh, I received some requests that we need to pray for. We I received some requests that we need to pray for tonight, beloved. We pray for the Swano family, Brother Willie Swano. We pray for Tamia, for Natasha, uh, Sister Marlene's sister who was diagnosed with COVID-19. We break the power of death and hell. We curse every demon from hell right now your spirit of hell I command you to cease your operation and die in their bodies die in their bodies die in their bodies right now I speak healing restoration power restoration power I rebuke the spirit of death upon their lives I rebuke the spirit of death upon their lives now, in the name of Jesus, be set free and be made whole. Be set free and be made whole. I pray for Tamiya, every symptom, I command the pain to go. I command the breathing to become normal, her lungs to be restored right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we curse the work of wickedness. Be set free and be made whole. We pray for Natasha. We pray for Natasha right now. We speak to her lungs. We speak to her body. Every spirit of sickness and disease. I command it to die now in the name of Jesus. I release resurrection power. Resurrection power. I release miracle working power. Now, in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of the Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, those who were cancer, liver cancer, kidney cancer, prostate cancer, I don't care what leukemia, lupus, I don't care what cancer it is, right now, I command that seed of cancer to dry up and die, dry up and die, come out of your body. Come out of your body now in the name of Jesus. Be set free and be made whole. Satan, 
Lamanda Rabakurbo, Rabakaraban, they are here to pray for, for blindness. I bind the spirit of blindness, the demon of blindness. I command you, devil, come out of that body. Your demon of blindness, I command you, out! Out! In the mighty name of Jesus, I command blind eyes to open. I command blind eyes to open right now in Jesus' mighty and glorious name. Be set free. Be set free. Be my whole. Sugar diabetes. The Lord is healing sugar diabetes right now. Stage, stage two sugar diabetes. You are healed. You are healed. You are healed right now. A new pancreas is forming in your body. You feel like a heat flowing through your body. Right now, receive it. I release the fire of God upon that body right now. Be set free and be made whole. La manda la bacurbondia. The Lord is also healing cancers. Cancers are healed right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. We vow to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. Be set free and be made whole. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Beloveds, thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Once again, share our broadcasts, our live stream. If you got a testimony, share it with me or with somebody. Because if you share, it shows your thankfulness. If you share what God is doing, your Healing will be permanent tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Every coronavirus will die. Every coronavirus will die. You will live and not die and declare the works of my God. You will live and not die and declare the works of my God in the name of Jesus. Be set free and be made whole. We thank you for liberty. We thank you for freedom. Thank you, Lord, that you set your people free. Thank you, Lord, that you will provide for your people financially. You will provide for them financially. You will open new doors. I thank you, Lord, for your church. According to Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, you give unto us power to create wealth and establish your covenant. Father, it's in your word, and your word is eternal. I thank you, Father, you give the businessmen in our churches, in our communities, the power, the anointing to create wealth, I release it over them right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you for the same wisdom of Solomon. Let it come upon them. Let it come upon them. I command every spirit of fear to go over their lives in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you. See you tomorrow night.